course with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Fullback Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios... With his faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Four heavily loaded army wagons moved through Gunstock Canyon. Each wagon was drawn by four strong mules, and the small caravan was guarded by a detachment of troopers. <laughs> Behind rocks on the canyon floor, and from the rim on both sides of the canyon. Can't even see the critters to get a good shot. They're on all sides. Look! There's more of them coming up the canyon from behind us. Now we can't even retreat. It was the day after the attack in Gunstock Canyon when a civilian scout employed by the army rode to the guard at the army post. Ho, ho, man. Oh, Out of my way, guard. i got to see the commandant right away. Come you... on, Huggins. I'll take you to him. Your, uh, your horse was lathered. I rode hard. Big news? News of engine work. Four supply wagons looted and burned in Gunstock Canyon. Eh? Yep, drivers and guards all killed. Yeah, that's bad. The colonel's been waiting for those wagons. They held rifles, a new repeating kind. Well, old Jumpin' Bear's renegades have those rifles now. Jumpin' Bear! That sneaking, slick-talking murderer. Oh, who goes there? Oh, watch this, another guard? How long since there's been a guard at the colonel's door? Oh, sorry, Sarge, I got orders to follow the manual. Friend or foe? Ah, oh, stand aside, you jughead. Hawkins has to see the colonel right away. Sergeant Colonel Kang. Roberts, sir. Sergeant Criswell, the regulations... Yes, sir, sir, Colonel Roberts, sir. Mr. Hawkins has a report of importance, sir. Jumping bears on the warpath again. What's that? His renegade followers ambushed four army supply wagons, killed the men, stole the cargo, and burned the wagon. Maybe, sir, you should write a note to Jumping Bear protesting the murder of your men. That'd be a peaceful way of settling it. Sergeant, I want to speak to you and Hawkins. Yes, sir. I know that you and the other men who have been here for years resent the change in command. Colonel Baines was a mighty smart engine fighter, sir. A splendid soldier, Sergeant. I can understand why you men were sorry to see him leave. But as you say, he was an Indian fighter. Is that why he was replaced, sir? I came here with orders to make peace with the Indians. And to tighten up on discipline. It is my job to follow the regulations of army conduct. I didn't make the regulations. Colonel, years ago, when I first came to the engine country, I had ideas of army discipline the same as you have. 
But I learned that there's things more important than rules and regulations. Out here, we've had to make our own rules. I reckon that's insubordination. I'll start with the guardhouse. No, Sergeant, I... I need you. I need you and your knowledge of this country more than any other man. I wish you'd try to conform. Colonel Roberts, that's the nearest I ever heard you come to talking like a human being. Now, uh, what about jumping bear? What's to be done about that renegade? If they have the new rifles that were being sent to us, they may attack the fort. Hawkins, do you know where Jumping Bear's camp? Sure I do. His whole outfit's in a valley not far from here. I'll lead a detachment there if you give the word. You'll lead me. But now you're talking, sir. I'll take two men with me. Two men? Yes. I propose to talk things but over with Jumping Bear. Talk? Hunting has been poor in this part of the country. Game is scarce. It is quite possible that Jumping Bear's people face starvation. Hey. That would drive the Indians to desperate measures. I'll meet the chief and see if we can arrange a peaceful settlement. Miles from the army post, the Lone Ranger rode into a small woodland camp where Toto, his friend, was waiting. The masked man had been visiting another friend, the padre of a mission not far away. Oh, oh, oh easy, sir. Let me fill up. Get in there. Are you right? Plenty fast, Kimosabe. You see padre? Yes, I saw him, Toto. And he had a letter for me. Oh? It came from a retired army officer in Washington. Officer, you know? Yes, uh, General Roberts. Oh, him, good friend. The general's son is now a colonel. And that's all generals say? Well, there's more, Tonto, but it's unimportant. Chief Jumping Bear Village near Fort. And him, bad Indian. Yes, Jumping Bear has made a lot of trouble. Uh, but him plenty smart. He's smart, and he'll do his very best to discredit Colonel Roberts. Come on, Tonto. We'll break camp at once and find out what's happening at Fort Vincent. <laughs> Roberts, carrying a flag of truce, held a powwow with Chief Jumping Bear and returned to the fort well pleased with what he thought had been accomplished. The next day, Sergeant Griswold, serving as the sergeant of the guard, was passed into the colonel's office. What is it, Sergeant? Chief Jumping Bear is here, sir. He and a half a dozen other redskins brought in a wagon load of stuff. They were passed by the guard because you gave him a note, sir. Good. Jumping Bear has kept his word. You see, Sergeant, that proves we can make friends with the Indians. I wouldn't bet on that, sir. Come with me. The sergeant looked dubious as he walked with the colonel toward a group of Indians and their horses standing beside a large wagon. Are any redskins to pay for murdering our soldiers in Gunstock Canyon? We cannot demand punishment until we can prove it was Jumping Bear's people who attacked. What's beneath the covers on that wagon? Rifles. I told Jumping Bear it was illegal for his people to have rifles and promised food in exchange for all the Indians' rifles. You figured to get back the rifles that were stolen, huh? Yes. And we'll have proof that Jumping Bear attacked the wagons and killed the soldiers. You aiming to punish the Indians? I'll see. Jumping Bear, I'm glad to see that you've kept your part of the bargain. Uh, wagon full of Indian rifle. Ask your men to remove the covering. Uma, police. You take rifle. You fill wagon with food. That was the agreement. Hey, look at the rifles he's brought. Old flintlocks and muzzle loaders. But I... Why, this is worthless junk that the Indians picked up on the plains and stolen from pioneers. Jumping bear, I told you to bring in all the firearms from your village. All there. You come search village. We know you have new rifles stolen from the army. Maybe other Indian. Not jumping bear's people. You promise food. Maybe now you change mind, break treaty, not give Indians food. Looks like he's outsmarted you, sir. I'll give you food. Jumping Bear left the fort with a wagon filled with food, and in a few days he was back for more. At the end of a week, the sergeant came into the colonel's office and said, Jumping Bear is here again, sir. He's already had two wagon loads of food. He can't possibly be using it all. Right now, it looks like we're going to have to break our word to the engines or starve ourselves to feed them. After a long trip, the Lone Ranger and Tonto made camp in a woods not far from Fort Vincent. They were preparing their evening meal when they heard a horseman approaching. A moment later, a man with sergeant stripes entered the clearing. Oh, there. Oh, oh, uh. Hey, mister, if you... Best. You're just in time for supper, Sergeant. Outlaw, huh? No. Well, I'll 
take your word for that because I don't care. I'm hungry enough to eat with anyone, so I'm accepting your invitation. My name is Griswold. Well, I'm glad to know you, Sergeant Griswold. Well, this is Toto. How? Uh, howdy, Toto. Yeah, if you wanted your name known, you wouldn't be wearing a mask, so I won't ask who you are. Uh, me, get food. Yeah, it sure smells good. We've been on short rations at the Ford. Ford Vincent? Yep. Uh, here. Here, Ford. Thank you. I've, uh, I've been out hunting game. In fact, a lot of the men were sent out to hunt. Game is scarce in these parts. You have a new commandant at Fort Vincent, haven't you? Yeah. Colonel Roberts. Dad read him. Why do you say that? Uh, he figured on outsmarting Jim Bear. But instead he got taken in on the slickest deal I ever heard of. That's why we're short on food. We've been giving it all to the engines. <laughs> Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you doing is the question. And here's what the happy, happy people have to say. Eating our weedies and do, 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 and okay. Okay. Take champions down south. They sure enough know about weedies. The Southland's favorite Wheaties fan is Musial, known as Stan the Man. Because when he swings his mighty bat, he nearly knocks that baseball flat. Another Southland pride and joy is Bobby Lane, a Wheaties boy. Because when he starts to turn on steam, he's sure a one-man football team. Just ask Stan Musial or Bobby Lane. They know the secret of Wheaties energy. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your weenies And you'll be doo-doo-doo-doo-and okay Okay Now to continue While he ate, Sergeant Griswold told the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the attack in Gunstock Canyon The peace meeting The Colonel's futile effort to recover the stolen rifles And Jumping Bear's repeated demands for food during the daylight that remained after the meal, the Lone Ranger and Tonto aided the sergeant in his quest for game and succeeded in shooting an antelope and a number of smaller animals. The masked man and sergeant parted as friends and made arrangements to meet the following day. That night at the campfire, the Lone Ranger said, Tonto, the sergeant seems to be sure that sooner or later Jumping Bear will attack the fort. Isn't that right? I've thought of a plan, a dangerous plan. I'll discuss it with Sergeant Griswold when we see him in the morning. The following morning found the sergeant once more hunting in a valley not far from the Lone Ranger's camp. Hawkins, the army scout, was with him when the Lone Ranger and Tonto approached. Here they come, Hawkins, the masked man and Tonto. Rocky, they're sure riding mighty fine horses. Who is the masked hombre? He didn't say, but I'll tell you this much, Hawkins. He's a friend. Oh, Silver, oh boy. Oh, oh, hi there. there. Morning, Sergeant. Uh, this is Hawkins, the scout I told you about. Howdy. Howdy. Well, last night I thought of a plan to find those rifles. Uh, there's nothing... Oh, wait, let's hear it, Griswold. Let's hear it. I'll need your help, Sergeant. I must warn you, the plan is dangerous. Uh, present situation is dangerous. You uh, may face court-martial. Well, I'll face anything for a chance to outsmart that ordinary slick scheme of jumping bear. Yeah, it goes double for me. Good. Tonight, Tonto will go to Jumping Bear's village. You learn all he can about the Indians. Yeah, but where do I come in? What part do I play? You play your part when the Indians go to the fort for another supply of food. Dismount and I'll outline my plan. <laughs> the Lone Ranger talked at length and was gratified to find Sergeant Griswold willing to sacrifice himself if need be to help the Commandant out of an impossible situation. Three days went by during which Tonto kept a close watch on all sides. Then on the third night... Tonto crept from the Indian village and returned to the Lone Ranger, who had waited in camp. Tonto, what did you learn about Jumping Bear? Him take plenty food from soldier. Throw it away. He's throwing food away? Ah, that right. Him see how far army go. I see. What does he plan to do when the army stops giving him food? Then Jumping Bear say, army break treaty. Then him make attack on army. Then he does have the new rifles? That right. Me hear plenty talk. So Hawkins was right. 
Jumping Bear massacred the soldiers in the supply wagons. Do you know where the rifles are hidden? No, me not know. That's what we must learn. Those rifles must be taken away from the Indians. Ah. Do you know when the Indians will send another wagon to the fort? It go there tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning, Sergeant Griswold will make his move. Tuttle returned to the Indian village that night. And the following morning, Jumping Bear sent the heavy wagon to the fort for a new supply of food. When Sergeant Griswold saw the wagon coming through the gate, he hurried to meet it. Uh, more food, eh? All right, I'll take charge of this. Oh, no. oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. You critters wait right here. I'll take the wagon and get her filled up. The surprised Indians climbed down from the seat and permitted the sergeant to take the wagon. Now get up there. Griswold knew exactly what to do in carrying out his part of the Lone Ranger's plan. He drew the team to a halt at one side of the storehouse. Oh, yeah. oh. A number of rocks gathered during the past three days were piled conveniently at hand. <laughs> You boys step lively. Throw those rocks into the wagon. But if those Indians get rocks instead of food... They can use these rocks to sharpen the wisdom teeth. Right, good. When the wagons were loaded, the rocks were covered with the skin that the Indians had brought for the purpose. The Indians, with a heavily loaded wagon, reached the village. The skins that had been tied to cover the contents were removed and the rocks discovered. Still in the Indian village, he saw Jumping Bear move up to the wagon, look at the rocks, and cry out in rage. Soldiers, break treaty! Break fire! Bring out war drums! standing next to Scout and Silver on a nearby hill, could see the Indian village in the distant valley. Looking through binoculars, he singled out Tonto, who had drawn apart from the rest of the Indians. Presently, the masked man's faithful Indian companion raised one hand high over his head. The signal. That's what we've been waiting for, Silver. Easy, steady, big fella. More Silver! More Scout! As the Lone Ranger dashed down the hill leading Scout, he took advantage of concealing rocks and clumps of undergrowth so the war-dancing Indians would not see him. Tonto was waiting apart from the Indian village. Oh, no, oh, 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 Scout, oh, oh, fella. Keep us happy. When Jumpin' Bear see rocks instead of food, him start war dance. That means he'll bring out the stolen rifles. That's right. Him send three Indians to place where rifles hidden. Indians break open cases, get rifles ready. When war dance finished... All Indian come for rifle. Three Indians go that way. Easy, Scott. Easy, fella. Then we'll follow them and find the rifles. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scott. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode hard and presently saw the Indians drawing rein in front of the cave. They were just dismounting when the masked man and Tonto rode in with guns drawn. Get your hands up. Hold over. Hold over. Oh, the Indians who had been watching the approaching horsemen knew Tonto as one who had been in their village. They were surprised when both Tonto and the masked man drew guns. Tell them in their own tongue, Tonto, to keep their hands up. I'll keep them covered while you disarm them. Now go, Wasima! It took but a moment for Tonto to collect the knives and tomahawks of the Indians. I'll keep an eye on them while I go inside the cave to look for the rifles. It was a large cave, and inside, not far from the wide entrance, there was a great pile of brushwood. Beneath the brushwood, the Lone Ranger discovered the piled-up cases of rifles and ammunition... He hurried back outside to where Tonto waited. I found the rifles, Tonto. We'll tie these three Indians and drag them inside the cave. I'll stay here while you ride to the fort. Uh, me savvy. Tell the sergeant we've found the rifles. And what him do then? I hope he can persuade Colonel Roberts to come here fast. There was ample room inside the cave for the captive Indians and their horses, as well as the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger opened several of the cases brought out the new repeating rifles and loaded them with ammunition. Leading his braves who waved their spears and bows and arrows, Jumping Bear headed for the cave where the repeating rifles had been stored. Then gunfire started from within the cave. One arrow after another thudded into the protecting cases, and others streaked past the masked man's head. But he held his position, determined to keep up the gunfire as long as there were loaded rifles. The end was near. A few more shots, and I'm through. He picked up the last of the loaded rifles, and then a bugle sounded. 
was gunfire from behind the Indians. The Redskins halted in their charge. They turned and saw the troopers led by Colonel Roberts, riding hard and firing from the saddle. The Indians were trapped between the gunfire of the troopers and the equally devastating gunfire from within the cave. Without firearms, they knew they had no chance. They threw down their crude weapons and raised their hands. The Lone Ranger led Silver from the cave as the sergeant approached. You held him. You did it slick. I was at the end of the string, sergeant. I'm glad you came in time. Hey, look over there. <laughs> Young Colonel has given Jumpin' Bear a talking to. Did the colonel listen to you? Uh, he sure did. He's a fine young leader, and he'll go a long way. I'm glad to hear you say that. He's willing to admit a mistake, and he learns fast. Him come this way now. Oh. Hey, Colonel Roberts, this is the masked man I told you about, sir. My compliments to you, sir, and my heartfelt thanks. You have nothing to thank me for, Colonel Roberts. Indeed, I disagree. The sergeant told me of your plan to make the Indians reveal their hiding place. Now, Jumpin' Bear can't deny attacking our wagon train. These rifles prove his men did it. He and his men will be taught a severe lesson. From now on, I'm sure the Indian situation will be kept well in hand. Good. Your father will be proud of you. I'd be honored if you and Tonto would return with me to the fort. Well, thanks, Colonel Roberts. We'd like to, but we have a message to deliver to a little mission. It's a long way from here, and I'd like to start at once. I'll be ready. We may meet again. I hope so. So do I, sir. Adios. He's Goodbye. Goodbye. I'd like to ask him many questions. I wonder why he mentioned my father. Because, sir, he knows your father. And your father knows him. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.